Now, this is going to sound like more of a funny and interesting issue than functional in the beginning and on its face, but honestly, this is something that's really serious for eating psychology with a lot of my clients and students. I know people who love having massive meals, just huge amounts of food when they sit down to eat, and whether it's just because they don't eat during the entire workday or they just love feeling really full and satisfied from everything that they're consuming, this is a real issue, and eating psychology is a big part of dialing in your program to make sure we lose that abdominal fat and expose your abs. So if the high frequency eating method and eating smaller meals throughout the day to keep your blood sugar balanced isn't an issue for you or isn't the right choice for you, I've been testing a method known as intermittent fasting. Now before you run off away from this lecture and get scared because fasting is incorporated in there. Don't think, oh, Jack, well, I'm scared. I've never fasted before in my life, and it sounds a little crazy, and I don't know if I can just not eat for long periods of time. And the reality is it's a lot easier than you would think, and there are tons of benefits to it, and as long as you don't put a lot of pressure on it or think that you need to perform intermittent fasting in some sort of box of parameters, then you'll do perfectly fine with it. I've experimented with it for six-plus months now, and I've seen some incredible results on intermittent fasting. The first and foremost that didn't even have to do with seeing the leanest abs that I've ever seen in my life. My abs have by far looked the best leanest. I've reached my lowest body fat percentages of all time on intermittent fasting, which is fluctuating between 8 and 10% body fat. But the other huge thing that it helped me do is cope with my hypoglycemia and low blood sugar by teaching my body to function better and more effectively off of the stored body fat that I have. And it also teaches your body to be more nutrient effective and use those nutrients a lot better when you get them because you're not eating as frequently. So instead of having your body say, oh, well, Jack's probably going to eat in the next couple of hours, so I can just keep burning this food. You're giving your body the idea that, holy cow, like, he's only eating a couple of times a day or once a day or whatever you just choose on your intermittent fasting or IF schedule. And I would eat two times a day normally. And I would usually work out in the morning around 11 o'clock and eat my first huge meal of the day around noon, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 total calories, uh, just tons of sweet potatoes and chicken and pork and eggs, healthy fats, proteins, good carbohydrates, everything that we discussed prior. And then I would eat my last meal for the day between 7 and 10 o'clock. I know that's a broad range. And I would give myself, uh, you know, depending on those hours, between a, I'd say 11 or 12 hour to 16 to 18 hour period of fasting uh, every other day. And on day, and on, uh, other times when I was trying to put on muscle mass as opposed to getting lean abs, I would use fasting as a way to reset my nutrient absorption and the way that my body accepts macronutrients and proteins and sugars and everything else. And I would actually do a 24-hour fast on either Saturday or Sunday. So bottom line is if you find that you either A, don't lose the amount of belly fat that you see from doing a regular, uh, more frequent eating schedule on a higher frequency diet. Uh, give intermittent fasting a try because the benefits of it are you get to eat massive meals. When you sit down to eat, you can have a pound of meat and two baked sweet potatoes or an entire pound of stir fry vegetables or whatever it is from the fat loss food guide eating list. And it could also enhance your fat loss, improve your blood sugar, uh, improve your nutrient sensitivity over short and long periods of time. So uh, test the higher frequency eating schedule first. And if that doesn't work out for you, uh, give intermittent fasting a try. Give it a go. I've incorporated some more resources that you can read up on IF a little bit more in this course. And if you search it on Google as well, you'll find a lot of other resources.